Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, <laughs> August 24, 2020. Uh, COVID update, Optimal Health Associates. A few things to go over. Statistics first, 354 new cases and 54,000 roughly in the state of Oklahoma. Since we're talking statistics, some clarification uh, for a, something that happened. I have a mistake I posted about. I talked to the person who had suggested or said that um, the state was not recording the cases from a variety of places, including CVS, et cetera. They retracted that today and said they had missed inform me and what they meant to say was they were not recording the rapid tests only um, and that CBS and the other places are for the most part following all the guidelines and reporting them to the state and the state is keeping track. Likewise though on the other side uh, Oklahoma so a retraction on that and I apologize for that error and the state is correct they are getting that information even though they've had some snafus along the way. Uh, in terms of Oklahoma County when you talk to Oklahoma County, they, on the other hand, are not getting that case data from some of the hospitals and local pharmacies who are doing that in other testing places, but the state is getting it. That's the, I guess, one of the important points. But since the county's doing the, the tracing, the, and the county isn't being informed that by the state, or perhaps they are, because I, well, I don't know, but since the people we've talked to or the person we talked to, who again was wonderful at the Oklahoma County Health Department, uh, said that they were not getting that information. That's why they wouldn't trace anyone and thus and so. Uh, that's where some of that confusion came in. So the state is getting the information. The counties may not be getting the information. And the big ticket item on testing is the rapid tests are the ones that are not being reported uh, per uh, the Oklahoma State Health Department because they're a gray zone. So that they're following CDC guidelines on that, I guess. So that's fine, but most people who get, a, a lot of people get rapid tests that are positive, don't go and get um, then swab tests. And sometimes the rapid tests are positives and the swab tests are not, and the people are terribly symptomatic because the biggest issue with the swab tests, as much as anything is false negatives, not false positives. So enough of that. So let's move on to immunology. I posted something yesterday on a very complex study about immunologic response in COVID patients that were hospitalized at the University of Pennsylvania. The take home point I brought or I wrote about in the article or concerning the article was that it's so incredibly complex with the immuno immun immunological response from the T4 cells and the T8 lymphocytes and the beta cells to the plasma blasts to the plasma cells that it's really hard to correlate what the pattern is based on how sick you are. And, there, and you fall into three different categories and it's really very difficult and it's going to take a lot of work to get this sorted out. So that's where someone who's an immunologist can have a big impact and I think the people who wrote this paper, if you look at it, are very smart people and hopefully there's lots of them looking at this stuff. But the other take home point, which I didn't write about in the study is of the 71 people who were included who are hospitalized, the vast majority of them were either obese or nearly obese. And this, I think 75% or so. Um, a lot of them were urban. A lot of them uh, had con other medical issues, um, notably cardiovascular disease, probably again 70% or so. So the vast majority of the patients were sick or had pre-existing illness and were close to obese or were obese. And so those people are nutritionally poor. And if we see this now rationally again, which is not new to any of you who've been watching, it's that nutrition and getting your immune system tuned up naturally is the key concept. And so I'll post an article one about melatonin, why it interrupts the inflammatory, inflammatory cascade for COVID. It's a paper specifically written about melatonin for COVID treatment and prevention. And then what's the nutritional steps to take to have a pretty ratcheted up immune system? And again, specifically for COVID. And it pretty much highlights everything we've talked about together already. Vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D, multivitamin with vitamin C, um, zinc, fish oil, which we've gotten a little more focused on. And they also talk a lot about selenium. So uh, most multivitamins will have selenium in them, but selenium seems to be very helpful also. And if we can stay focused on the immunologic aspect of making our 
our immune system's ready to fight off the virus and be and be balanced, we're probably going to be in really good shape. And again, there's going to be people who get sick because I never want everyone to think, oh, you're only going to get this if you're older or overweight or have multiple medical problems because people um, definitely can get it who don't have that. Uh, we need to just remember, let's balance our immune systems because the youngest patient in that uh, trial, or it wasn't a trial or study, was 28. And so again, young people can be hospitalized and get really sick too. Um, then in terms of the Trump news was they, or excuse me, the President, President Trump said that um, emergency use order for convalescent plasma was uh, put in place yesterday. That's very exciting. Convalescent plasma means uh, plasma from someone who's gotten infected, cleared the virus, not infected anymore. They have antibodies that are specific um, to the virus and can inactivate it in theory. That data seems to be good enough now since it's been reported all over the world to be helpful in general and also very importantly, um, relatively harmless to patients to receive as long as you know it's the right blood type and or, you know all the things that have been done in order to give someone plasma have been met. The the antibodies can be very helpful for sick COVID patients in the hospital. That's not for outpatient treatment, it's for inpatient treatment. But I think the take home message on that is it's pointing towards immunity, immunity, immunity. There's no reason to suspect that a vaccine would ever work if we weren't gonna mount an immune response. There's no reason to expect that we would ever survive this virus if our immune system couldn't respond to it and give us some protection. So people who are, who've had the virus who, and who've gotten sick, um, that some of this feeds from this paper I read, I mean, they have a pretty brisk immune response. 86% of the um, people in the trial uh, from University of Pennsylvania had a very brisk uh, antibody response within about seven days to the virus once they were admitted to the hospital. So that's a great number. So again, people who get sick with the virus are making a vigorous immune response. That vigorous immune response is producing antibodies that are specific to COVID and that can be used to help patients. But it also means the people who still have those antibodies aren't gonna be able to get that sick right now. I'm sorry, my phone's stinging. Um, because the virus is the same. I mean, there may be, changes in it superficially genetically, but so far there hasn't been a viral genetic mutation that said, hey, I'm different and I'm not gonna be recognized by the immune system. We're still looking for that first secondary infection where someone has a documented COVID case, gets sick, bounces back, and then three months later gets a second COVID infection. Those have, that's just not happened yet. Once that happens, we have to start thinking, oh, immune problems because not for that person, but just in general that maybe the virus has mutated massively. Uh, and so that's, a, that's an issue. So, but it hasn't happened, so we can be very positive about it. Uh, final notes uh, tonight questions about how do you know if you have a functional immune system? Well, if you're eating well and taking your vitamins and you don't have any major medical problems, you probably have a functional immune system. I mean, keeping your immune system intact is relatively easy if you're taking vitamin D, a multivitamin, fish oil, and some zinc. Um, I think that's gonna be a really good thing. If you're not doing that, your immune system may not be as good as it could be. That's kind of the balancing thing. And then you look at the melatonin separately, specifically to help fight viruses and help fight um, COVID. So that's what we have to remember. If you're not doing that, you probably have some nutrition, or you have some risk of your immune system maybe not responding the way we want it to. And again, this is more towards people who are older, people over 30, people under 30 who have a lot of medical problems, uh, teenagers with lots of medical problems, et cetera, we really need to be much more focused on nutrition. The problem with older people always has been, if you look at any nursing home data, they're nutritionally terrible, and that's why we want them on um, vitamins and supplements. Um, anything else, Kim? Well, I think you had mentioned the study earlier, and you had said elderly, obese, or urban. Oh, what is the urban? Urban is again, it, urban just means that if you're in a, the, the nutritional status of people who live in the inner cities in this country is terrible. Um, it's a sociological event. Um, 
it's just how it is. And that's one of the things we have to look at. If we look at our socioeconomically disadvantaged um, people in this country, they eat poorly, they're obese, and that's that combination is bad because if you don't have a functional immune system to fight off viruses, you're gonna get, this is not the virus to get. This is not the virus to get if your immune system isn't working. So that's what we want to really focus on. Likewise, we don't know necessarily what's going to happen still with people who are on immunosuppressants, who've had chemo. Again, there isn't this huge amount of data showing anything bad with them, but there are definitely people who've been hospitalized who are on immunosuppressants and who've had cancer. Um, there's some theories that since you're on some immunosuppressants that stop too much inflammation because you're already on them, then they're the same meds we're using in hospital for people who have uh, COVID and who are getting inflamed. So it would make sense that if you're on some of those biologics for rheumatologic disease, you're gonna be less likely to get as sick with COVID. But again, it's all theory and that's what we're talking about. So along with that, is has there yet been any studies done on people that are on plaque one l for a rheumatologic issue? Are they getting it, not getting it, getting it sick? So the question is, if, has there been a study looking at 300 people on plaque one l for lupus and uh, RA, and are they getting sick, as uh, getting COVID as often as people who are not on the medicine? No, there's not been a study done on that. I've seen two case reports of people so far um, getting COVID on hydroxychloroquine. They both got very mild illness. The first one was from, I think, April. Um, and that one, they made a big, it made the news actually, because, oh my God, it was like, see hydroxychloroquine, that lady still got COVID. Well, yes, you can still get COVID with hydroxychloroquine, but she didn't get sick sick. She got a little ill, then she was fine. So, but no, there's not been a formal data set on that, unfortunately, nor will there probably ever be, but that's here nor there. I did post an interview with Har Dr. Harvey Reich from uh, Yale today. Uh, it's just something to watch and learn uh, about his opinions on hydroxychloroquine. A again, he's from the point of view that it's extremely helpful, so you'll just have to watch it and judge for yourself. People sometimes get mad when I po post things and say, watch and judge for yourself. Watch and judge for yourself. Um, you can make your own decisions and choices based on what science says. So thanks very much and good night.